Hey Bear Buddies, and thanks for joining me for Volume 45 of Furberry's Fables. Today's story features the very talented team of Dark Little Voices. If you enjoy it, please show your support for our collab by hitting the like button and leaving a comment down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Today's story is Old Sarah and Her Jack-O-Lanterns by Lone Donut. Every Halloween, old Sarah would carve pumpkins, and every year the neighborhood teenage boys would smash them. Sarah would spend hours, sometimes days, carving her pumpkins. She would carve and peel and scrape, making beautiful and terrifying designs on the orange flesh. Since her husband died some years ago, carving pumpkins became the only thing she would look forward to. Some asked her why she didn't keep them indoors, considering they would be destroyed within the day of being put out on the stoop. Sarah would sigh and say, I want the children to come to my door for candy. I'm alone and have no children or grandchildren. I like to see their costumes and see them smile. So yes, I put my pumpkins out in hopes that maybe one day they'll attract good children instead of bad. The neighbors pitied Sarah and would try to watch out for the neighborhood thugs. They would warn them and threaten to call the police if they saw anyone loitering a little too long near Sarah's house. But still, even with the watchful eyes of the neighbors, Sarah's pumpkins would still be smashed to bits within 24 hours. Every day, Sarah would put out a pumpkin, and by the next morning it would be smashed. This continued until finally it was Halloween night. Children in costumes ranging from scary to sweet went from door to door giggling and awing over their sugary spoils. Neighbors were too busy with trick-or-treaters and their own children to pay much mind to Sarah's house. She currently had five large, articulately carved pumpkins. They sat on the stoop, ascending the stairs to her front door. They all held a bright, golden light illuminating from within. Little Johnny was finally old enough to trick-or-treat without his parents. They told him to be back in an hour, and his father showed him how to read his watch. He was dressed like Raphael from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and was running from house to house. His orange jack-o'-lantern candy bucket swung violently to and fro as he went, but did not drop a single piece of candy. It was nearly full, and he had enough room for maybe one more house. He stood at the end of the path leading up to Sarah's porch. The lights in the house were dark, but the pumpkins lit up the front door in an eerie yellow light. He always heard about old Sarah and felt bad for her. He hadn't seen any other trick-or-treaters go up to her door. Slowly he opened the front gate and made his way up the path. It seemed so quiet, the sounds of children and families fading out behind him as he approached the old house. He wasn't sure why, but he was scared. Johnny stopped at the bottom of the stairs, peering up at the large oak door in front of him. He lifted one foot and placed it on the first step. His sneaker squelched as it landed something wet and sticky. Looking down, Johnny lifted up his foot to inspect whatever it was he had stepped in. Dark red liquid stained the bottom of his white shoe and coated the first step. It ran down the gray stone and pooled at the bottom. Johnny froze, and his eyes slowly traced where the liquid was coming from. Pouring out of the corners of every carving, the river of blood dripped. It seeped out of their mouths and out of the corners of their eyes, yet their candles still glowed. The pumpkins watched Johnny with white, blood-stained grins. Little Johnny didn't even notice when he wet himself in his costume. The next morning, the town was finally told what had happened. The previous night, Sarah had finally caught the boys who were smashing her pumpkins. Police weren't sure how she did it, but she somehow got the boys to enter her house, where she proceeded to chop them up. After slicing their heads from their bodies, Sarah carved their faces. She scooped out their eyes, sliced off the nose, and carved smiles and grimaces onto their lips. She then proceeded to place each head into pumpkins and place a small tea-like candle on their tongues. Happy with her work, she placed them on her porch and awaited her first trick-or-treater. <laughs> Bullshit. Nick said, slapping his knee for emphasis. I held my hands up and laughed. I swear to God, my mom was a kid when it happened. Said she saw one of the pumpkins herself. I say, crossing my heart with one of my fingers. Nick chugged the rest of his Bud Light and chucked it over his shoulder into the woods behind him. 
Frank sat to the side, watching me seriously. No shit? He said, leaning forwards and clasping his hands together. No shit. She told me to never go near old Sarah's place, or her ghost would do the same to me. I leaned back against the tree, taking another swig of my beer. Nick snorted and stood up, wobbling a little. Alright then. Let's go check old Sarah out. He slurred, starting to walk away. Wait, you want to go right now? But it's in the middle of the night. Frank said, standing up quickly and going after Nick. I shrugged down the rest of my beer and followed after them. The town was dead quiet. I wasn't sure exactly the time, just that it was late. Nick charged ahead, drunkenly stomping and teetering. Frank was beside him, catching Nick when he teetered a little too far, and was trying to convince him to stop. Look, dude, I'm already in trouble with my folks. If they find out, I was breaking and entering. He dramatically drew his finger across his neck in a slicing motion and stuck out his tongue. Nick waved him off and kept going. I lazily followed after, looking up at the star-riddled sky. I didn't care either way, all I knew is that sleep was starting to call my name and I was about ready to call it. Hey guys, why don't we do this another night, huh? It's late and I'm tired and... I was interrupted by my collision with Nick and Frank. They had stopped abruptly and in my daze I didn't notice. I peered past them and suddenly felt very awake and sober. The house wasn't very big, one floor and maybe two bedrooms maximum. The windows were boarded shut and the fence that surrounded the yard has seen better times. Nick was standing beside an old mailbox that had a large dent in it and was barely hanging onto its post. We stood and stared. Suddenly Nick shoved Frank forward and laughed. Go up and knock, man. See if old Sarah is still home. He said laughing and shoving Frank up the path. Frank protested and tried to break free, but Nick was larger and stronger. He kept pushing Frank closer and closer to the porch. A cold breeze sent a chill up my spine and I followed after. It seemed deathly quiet and something in the air just felt off. Frank and Nick were stumbling up the porch, Nick laughing and Frank grumbling. Raising one hand and winking, Nick knocked three times loudly on the front door. We stood frozen, listening for any sound. The wooden gate behind us creaked, and we all jumped at the sound. Laughing and trying to ease the tension, I reached into my jacket pocket and pulled out a pack of cigarettes. I plopped one in the corner of my mouth and flipped open my lighter. The flame was small but bright in the dim light. Frank and Nick turned to look at me, and all the humor from their faces disappeared. They were looking over me, to something that was behind me. Their eyes were wide and full of fear-induced sobriety. I felt a cool breeze again, and the lighter went out. A soft, quiet voice whispered in my ear as I felt a hand on my shoulder. Good boys never come to my house. It was then that I noticed the jack-o'-lantern sitting at the bottom of the porch. Its white-toothed grin smiled up at me as its sinister eyes glared. The hand tightened until the unlit cigarette fell from my mouth. Why? Why do the bad ones always come? The voice whispered in my other ear, then chuckled. <laughs> Trick or treat, boys. 